Hello everybody. Today we're going to talk about automotive compressor failure. And I had a neighbor that basically um, I felt got ripped off from a dealership saying that his compressor failed. His complaint was that um, he had intermittent cold air coming out of the vents. So they said it needed a new compressor. And this the vehicle only had about 60,000 miles on it. And usually when a compressor fails, the air conditioner is not cold. Sometimes it's not cold all of the time, right? It usually has catastrophic failure. So it's unusual to have intermittent operation and the root cause be the compressor. And just to let you know, when I went to General Motors uh, training center for air conditioning, they said that they had designed these automotive compressors to last around 100,000 miles. And of course, this would be worst case scenario, like in the states of Florida and Texas. So if you lived in Michigan, you could probably get 150, maybe even 200,000 miles out of a compressor. So this led me to th making this video because uh, I think that a lot of automotive shops jump at saying that the compressor has failed when maybe it hasn't. So let's talk about real quick how the air conditioning system works. And, and basically, you know, you have uh, two heat exchangers in the car. One is in the interior cabin and it removes the heat from the interior cabin and passes it to the front heat exchanger, which is called the condenser. And then we have the radiator, the radiator fan motor, removing the heat from that Freon out into the atmosphere. So the compressor, which we're gonna focus on here today, um, compresses the Freon and then we have a high pressure Freon that leads up to this mystery spot and then automatically it turns into a low pressure Freon and it, this transformation from high to low is where the air conditioning system um, it starts to make cold air. <clears throat> so the component that is responsible for this magic of turning a high pressure into low pressure is called the expansion valve or the orifice tube. Now, most American cars have an orifice tube. And how this works is basically, um, let's say you have a can of hairspray and you push down on the top button and you're spraying, you'll feel that the can is getting cold because it's high pressure inside the can and low pressure outside the can. So the longer you hold a nozzle down, the colder that the can gets. So basically we have the same theory right here. We have a uh, high pressure that is metered into a low pressure and that causes this Freon to get cold. So in this is what an orifice tube looks like and you can see that it has this inlet filter screen and, the, and this, this screen is the only filter in the automotive air conditioning system. It, it, it was sealed from the factory and there is no reason that there should be any debris on this screen unless we have a compressor failure. So let's go back to the uh, picture of the compressor and this is a, a belt driven compressor and this is basically the crankshaft. This is a rotary style compressor. So if you can see this plate here has a thin spot and a thick spot and as it rotates through that thick and thin area it winds up pushing these pistons in and out and in and out. Now this is a they removed the piston from this cylinder so you could see, and I believe this is a five uh, piston rotary compressor, but it's this constant movement that causes the compressor to compress the Freon. So when you have a worn out compressor, these metal components inside have worn out. And a lot of times you'll create metal chips and these metal chips will be found um, at the orifice tube and jammed into the screen. So of course you have to pull the Freon out of the system to remove this filter. But when you have a catastrophic failure of a compressor, you're gonna find the compressor chips and pieces and debris packed into this uh, filter screen. So that's why, um, you know, and we'll go back to this picture here. The compressor is making high pressure Freon and it flows in this direction. You can see from the arrow. So any metal chips that exit the compressor are gonna be dispersed throughout the system and get stuck in the condenser. They're gonna get stuck in the receiver dryer 
they're going to get stuck in the expansion valve or the orifice tube where the screen uh, will go ahead and filter out that debris. So my point is, is that all of these components will likely have to be replaced or flushed. So here's the problem. They should be able to be flushed, right? But a lot of times the technicians don't want to take the time because you can see all of these passageways, even if they do an excellent job of flushing the system, they can miss little pieces of metal and, you know, they'll wind up causing trouble on the new compressor, right? So that's why automotive uh, compressor failure is such an expensive repair because when they self-destruct inside, they spread those metal chips throughout the system. So here's the thing. When you have a uh, compressor that has failed, you can, you can do a quick check from the pressure readings. And as you can see, there is a high side tap right here. So you connect the high side gauge right there and you can connect the low side pressure gauge over here. And your gauges should show 30 to 50 on this side, uh, 200 on this side. So if your readings show the same pressure and the compressor is running, that means that you have internal failure of the compressor because you should have a differential of pressure when the compressor is engaged and running. So that is the first step in diagnosing a compressor. The second step is to remove the Freon and check for a buildup of internal compressor parts on this inlet screen. So in, in our final picture here, I'm going to show you the um, actual picture of, a, uh, of an orifice tube. And this is out of a Ford uh, vehicle. The green ones are usually Ford. And you can see this fine mesh screen. And these, when you have an internal compressor failure, you're going to find all kinds of metal debris uh, packed into this screen. So this is something that, you know, you, maybe you can't do it yourself because the, you have to remove the Freon to inspect this screen. But your shop should be able to pull this out of your system and show it to you. And if you find that it's packed with debris, well, then you can pretty much believe that diagnosis. But, you know, just to review... The way that a professional automotive technician diagnoses a failed compressor is by attaching his gauges to the low side and to the high side and then, you know, running the air conditioner and observing the pressure differential between the high side and the low side. So I hope that this video was helpful. And if you have any problems or questions, go ahead and leave a comment and I'll see what I can do to help you. But you have to remember that it's pretty hard to uh, diagnose systems, uh, you know, via the internet. The, this system is something that you really got to put your hands on to diagnose the problem correctly. So thank you for watching, and I hope that you'll tune in to future videos.